Hey guys, welcome back. So you can see where we're at right here, closed at 44.9175. And we drill in the past couple days, we can see that elusive 4500. You're just not able to break it no matter how many times you try. Tried a couple times in here. It's just, it was support, then we kind of flipped right here, and then you're trying again and again and again, and every day it's like Groundhog Day. We're just gonna have to wait for the Fed. We're gonna spend some time tonight going through uh, the dot plot so that people can understand it for tomorrow. It's gonna be really prominent tomorrow. Now what we have to focus on are these levels and what we're going to do about it. And then also we are constantly seeing the level down here, this 4460, 4465 level. We're constantly seeing that hold. If you drill into this on a 15 minute and you just kind of came across, you can really see this 4500 very clear. It gets a lot clearer, even the, the little bit of the battleground in here. You get these wild wicks and you just go straight across. You just It just keeps on going. So it's definitely a level that you know, you're going to want to watch and we want to pay attention to. What I don't like about it more than anything is probably exactly from a bull perspective, which you probably don't like as well. Uh, even here, you were just support, support, and it just kept holding. Uh, well, we flipped that and we're not really support anymore. And it just really kind of started happening like a day ago. I'm not really crazy about that. And it's definitely something that we want to watch. And there's some things here that are happening that we will get into uh, in great detail about the indexes. But I just think that that's worth pointing out. And if you drill in here a little bit, even if you take a look at like the 63 level, there are some spots in here where sure, we struggled with that before recently. And I'll just come straight across and drop that level right there. Yep, you could probably already see that. And it's been support here then we cracked have a little battle back and forth then finally flipped and now it's support again so that is support for now i want to point that out it is definitely a level you're going to want to watch tomorrow and you're going to really want to drill into this and we should probably just do that on a four hour right now so you could look at this and say well what are the key levels that you want to watch for tomorrow well everyone can be can talk about this elusive head and shoulders and i will point it out in a second where you are very clearly you know, left shoulder head right shoulder this is the neckline. You'd have to break 44.20 in order for that to execute. Uh, is that possible tomorrow? I mean, anything's possible depending upon what Powell actually says. If you take a look from where you closed and whence that would be, I mean, it's only a 2% drop. It wouldn't be the first time we had a 2% drop in the market. So certainly it's possible. But these are the levels that I would take a look at. These are the levels right here that I would be paying attention to tomorrow uh, after Powell not only says that we're not going to raise interest rates because anything else we will just simply sell off but the 230 speech is really what's going to be important not the two o'clock announcement that we already pretty much know what's going to happen now if we look at the nasdaq on the four hour you see a very similar pattern uh, more concerning about the nasdaq than this elusive head and shoulders that we keep hearing about and talking about I don't know if that breaks. We're going to get to it in a moment. What does bother me is this trend line because you were never near this trend line for the longest time. You never touched it again until about August, right after what? Right after we had that note from Japan. And we're going to get into Japan a little bit tonight, too. So we never really started testing this level. Well, if you're not going to door enough times, eventually it will open. You might not like what you get, but the door will open. So that's something that we have to take a look at here. We hit, we touched, we formed. That was the end of it. And we never really bothered with it. And this was really, you know, that um, regional banking crisis. And then we never really had to worry about it until now. And here we are. So what do we do now? Well, we sit, we watch, we wait. We hope we don't break it. Now, for our purposes, what we're going to do here is remove this. And we're going to drill into the NASDAQ a little bit. I really want to focus on a couple things that I'm noticing. Uh, we're going to use a, a different service here in a second because it's, it's important to kind of just get a lay of the land on where we're at. You can see these levels in here pretty clearly. And you're just re it's just rejection after rejection. What we don't want to see is you don't want to start taking out these lower lows, 15, 14, 8. Uh, if you were looking at breaking this neckline, candidly, you have to get through 15,000. If that's really what you're looking for to break the head and shoulders, that's what you have to do. Couldn't that happen? Sure, you're you're getting closer to it for sure. You're at about two, two and a half percent. Wouldn't be the first time that, that the, the Fed meeting knocks us down there. We have to watch that. What I don't like is I don't like how hard it's getting to get through neckline. I don't like that. That is somewhat bothersome to me. It shouldn't be this hard to get back over a neckline retest something in here and instead of those retests what are we getting we're starting to get these slopes and i'm just not really crazy about that we all know that this exists on the daily we're already aware of it i do think we should spend some time just understanding where we are on the vix we have seen a little bit of movement there let's clean that up 
you're just kind of bouncing around in there, guys. You're not really doing a whole heck of a lot. There's not much to say about that, is there? You, you went up a little bit today when the NASDAQ was down a dollar and that was it. Speaking of the dollar, I think this is very important. You're still in that trading range. You're not breaking out. Now, we went over this on Saturday, and I'll link Saturday's video at the end of this. I would watch that, what we went over with the dollar, because I think that's really the way that we're heading here. I think that's really what we're focused on. In other words, I think you're going to get these crosses, but I don't think that at first, at least, they're going to act the same way because we tend to be flatlining in here. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm going to ignore it, but I don't know that I'm going to give it as much weight as they, I give that. And the answer is, well, why? Well, usually I have some kind of massive trajectory. In other words, here, the 55, which I use a 55, you should use whatever you're comfortable with. Most people use a 50. And the 200 screaming up, and then this is screaming down. That's not what's happening here. We're just kind of going sideways. And eventually we're just going to meet up. This is very different to me than if we were just running and heading up and all of a sudden this had a massive trajectory to it. I'm not saying I'm going to ignore it. I'm not saying it doesn't negate this. I'm just wondering the power of this and you know where we are with hedge funds right now because we went through it and I will link that video at the end, but I have my eye on this and I keep looking at it and saying, okay, well, is this why financials are rallying? I'm not really sure. I think it might have something to do with the dot plot and the fact that they might be done with interest rates and now you have positioning real estate investments, commercial real estate loans, things like that. And we're going to talk about that uh, in a minute here. But what I really would want to focus on before we get into focused on the NASDAQ and the dot plot and everything there, I think we just kind of have to look at a couple sectors. And I'm going to go through some names at the end of this as well. Actually, there's some Japanese names I think are really interesting. But if you look here on, on the socks, we're just unable to get through anything that's really of significance, aren't we? And I think that's really my my rub here. We're just not able to do that. And you're starting to see some some rolling in some of the key levels. In other words, you're watching energy peak out. We're going to talk about this as well in a moment uh, and why I think that's happening. But you're starting to see this peak out a little bit. You're starting to see sellers come in here and meaning we're just not up every day in the exons of the world. Every day they're opening up and now we're selling down. Doesn't mean it goes on like that forever, but we definitely want to pay attention to that. And I think that once we get through the Fed meeting and we get through Powell's speech, then we're going to tend to focus more on this. Now, in front of us is what is referred to as a Fed dot plot. And this shows what happened at the June meeting. And this shows what's supposed to happen at the September meeting. Well, what does this all mean? It's a chart and it just shows where each FOMC member thinks interest rates will be by the end of the current year. So that's really what it is. Each one of these dots represents a member and it just shows where they're going to be by the end of the year. It sees, do they change their position? Here's the rates over here. And so what you do is you kind of look at it and say, okay, well, by the end of 23, and what they're expecting tomorrow on the dot plot is they're expecting more consensus. Well, how can you say that? Well, now we have everybody lined up here. We have this one kid doing his own thing. So you're right here. You can see where we're at. And so this is going to consolidate down. And what we're saying is we're probably not going to see cuts there's probably less probability of seeing more raises and we're starting to get to some kind of median. And then they'll go out and say, well, where do you see rates at the end of 24? And you're gonna see June and September here again. And they're gonna say, well, the people that thought we're gonna to have to hike a couple of times, well, they're gonna come back down to a more median, a more moderate level. And the people that were saying that we're gonna to have to cut, well, they're getting to a more moderate level. So what, what's important about this and why this has significance tomorrow is you're going from a position of being a little wilder. In other words, you had way more range here. You were between anywhere between six and a quarter to roughly that five. And now you're really dropping down to, let's just call it, you know, we'll call it six to five and a quarter. So you're getting a lot tighter in here. You're certainly getting a lot tighter when you go out to 24 and you can see how much tighter it's going, it's getting in here. So you're getting some consensus. We're, we're reining that person in and, and this person in and then we're getting that consensus in here. I think that's really important. And then if you start looking at the end run, midpoint range, target range for federal funds, you can see where everybody lies and they're just giving you September for that, midpoint target range for federal funds rate, longer term, and they kind of state where they see the Fed funds rate coming in, and they're expecting a little bit more of a consensus around an area where before we had some outliers and we're expecting some of those outliers to come in. Why is this important? Because the more of a consensus that you get, the more consistency you have, 
the more reliable it is that that's what's going to happen. That's what's important about it. The market loves certainty, and this can absolutely give us certainty if they start getting closer and closer together. It doesn't mean that they're right and that's the way it's going to happen. Something can always change the outlook. But we want this closeness. We want these as close together as possible because that allows us to have a little more certainty than we recently had. And you can see that with the June meetings. If you go off the June meetings, we're all over the place for the for 23, 24, 25. I mean, you're between two to five and three quarters. I mean, in end of 24, you're at six to three and a half. So we're all over the place. And now they're starting to rein us in a little bit. And that's what people want to see that level of certainty and that level of consolidation. Now, one thing that is troubling me, and I do want to get into some names here, but I want to go over this. We're making lower lows on the RSI, which I do look at, and we're cracking the 50. And some of the internals are not going so well. So let's take a look at that. NASDAQ new low on a percentage basis. In other words, names that are in the queue ETF that are hitting new 52 week lows. And I just want to look year to date so we can kind of get a sense of where we are right now. You can see where we started off the beginning of the year and then we had a spike right here. I'm not so much interested in the spikes. What is concerning me more than anything is that we are seeing an elevated level in here more so more elevated in this area than we have seen all year long so in other words this section on a percentage basis is significantly more elevated than any other section even though you've had this little spike in here and what we're seeing is we're starting to see those percentages start to weigh on the market now i put a 20-day moving average right in here in the same space and the reason for doing that is just so you can see over the previous 20 days where was the only time that we were even up was over here and if you go back you'll all remember from december and that's why that area is elevated if we go to take a look at a one year you'll see why you're elevated over here obviously because of what happened in october uh, when we bottomed and then december obviously uh, and you can actually see that's the peak spikes of this are usually good signs that you're bottoming what's not a great sign of a bottom coming is when you're just constantly grinding higher and that's something that i just want to pay attention to and be aware of one of the things I try to do here is just point out what's going on, whether or not it's good, bad, or indifferent. We just want to know what the facts are so we can make better decisions. So what we'd like to see is we'd like to see this percentage of new lows going forward. We'd like to see it drop. We'd like to start seeing it dissipate back down, and we'll go from there. Now, in front of us, this is all through Sediment Trader, these charts that I'm going to show. We take a look at XLE, which is energy. And this is percentage of stocks in the XLE that are above the 50 day moving average. We're just going to use a year and we're going to focus on these times when you're at that 100 percent or even when you're at that 85 percentage or we can even say 90 percent. And we're just going to go a year because it's just really easy to see what's happening right now. And you can see that you can stay elevated here for a period of time. The elevation is not the problem. The problem is what? When you start breaking that elevation, when you start breaking that elevation, you're going to want to see uh, some issues here or you're going to see some issues here if you look being up here was not the problem the problem was when you broke right here and you started declining through so if we wanted to look for a mark i don't even know that you'd want to use this demarcation line because by then it looks like it's too late so it looks like when you find an average area and then you break that average area that might be a good indication but it's it's literally impossible if every stock like you have here to sustain this and go higher. It's just not going to work that way. You're not going to have every stock in your sector above its 50 day moving average and just trot along. Now, this has been going on for months and you can see that, but eventually this will start to come home to roost. Now, I feel like we're starting to see that. So if I go out year to date, to me, this looks like you're starting to get a little slopey. Now, that's kind of hard to say because of where you've been. You've been at 100 percent for months. And usually the longer you're up here, the more painful this becomes. But if you're starting to look at this level right here, and what we could do is just kind of drop a line there and then look at that line. So what do I mean by that? Just drop a mark here and then just drop that straight across and go, okay, well, well, that is pretty much the low of that area. I would want to watch this. I would not want to be a net buyer of new positions here. I'd want to watch and see how energy is going to play out and go from there. I thought this was pretty interesting because you've been up here for so long. And so what you're always trying to do is identify when's the move. 
Now, you could argue that, well, this was the move and then we broke down. Well, then you've reversed and you can see that and kind of go from there. Uh, when you break down and you don't have that reversal, then this is pretty telling. If you have a reversal and you wind up going over it, well, then you have a pretty clear indication that you have an issue. But I do think that this makes a lot of sense to look at, and this would keep me away from the sector right now on new ads until we see what's going on there. Uh, everyone's just a little too giddy on oil and energy right now. And to me, it's the same thing as we just looked at the dollar on Saturday. So comment on this, let me know what you think. But this is no different than when we look at the S&P. One of the things I always point out is when the S&P, let me flip that to an arrow, when the S&P is always above this 90, always, I hate to say always, but when you're when you hit 90 on a percentage basis of stocks above the 50 day moving average, you're putting in some kind of high and you almost always come down to where you have to break that 20 level. Thankfully, we just did this and we we're already near that 20 level. So we're already working that off for us now. But the, the energy sectors or sectors are no different. Uh, why didn't it happen here? I'll say it again, because we had $1.7 trillion that could have cared less about anything technical, fundamental, or macro that was going on. They were just buying everything they could get their hands on. We don't have that anymore, and that's why you're seeing this. And this is pretty historic. If you take the last two times that this happened, you can see that pretty clear. I'd rather look at the 90s because those ratings are so extreme. And again, it doesn't mean that when you're going up, you want to pay attention. It's when it starts to roll that you really want to pay attention to it. So this is no different. Again, all this that I'm showing you, this is all from Sediment Trader. Now, in front of us is the Nikkei, and we're showing 12-week highs. And we've been here before, sure. And I'm using three years for right now. And we could see these spikes. What I like about this is the consistency. We're hitting higher highs. There's a couple names in here I'm going to go over, but I thought this was worth pointing out. They're getting stronger. Right now, the U.S. is not, but Japan is definitely getting stronger, and you're constantly seeing spikes of stocks hitting those highs. We talked about that hedge earlier on in August, if you remember, about what they're doing in regards to their bond market, and that is transferring very nicely to, for them into the equity market. So let's go through a couple names there that I think we should watch. There's a lot of names to go over. I want to start with a couple that you're probably not familiar with, you don't really pay attention to, get into some usual suspects, and then some that look absolutely awful, but look like they're going to continue down. I have a lot, a lot of names I want to go over here in a very short period of time. So this is Toyota. TM, a lot of people don't play it for obvious reasons because it's super thin. I'm actually showing it on a weekly chart because it's super thin. The one thing that we really want to focus on here is that you have a strike going on. Since that strike's been announced, since it's been anticipated, not only do you have Japan doing exceptionally better and stronger, and Toyota probably the biggest, if not very close to the biggest company that they have uh, out there. I would look at this. I, I would really strongly look at this because they're only going to gain market share. That's all that's going to happen. They're not having the same issues that we're having. So if that's the case, they're just going to gain market share the entire time that GM and Ford are delayed and, and fumbling. I, I want to pay attention to this name a lot. I want to see if, see if we can find a way in. Now, I'll show you what the issue is. The issue is that you are you just don't know what you're going to get the next day when you come in. You close at 188, you come in at 195. You, know, you could be, even here, you could go to bed at 173, wake up the next morning, you're at 168. So there is some of that that you're going to have to deal with, and that becomes an issue. Another are these banks. These banks look absolutely amazing, but these dot plots make it so hard. I mean, we just went over dot plots, that's why it's in my head. But it makes it so difficult to get up and in these trades. And you almost have to go and take a look at the weeklies to make any kind of decision, and that's really what I'd be trading off of. You go back and look at where you were a little bit ago, you know, 20 years ago, these things were a lot higher than they are now. And th there's a couple things to take from that. Number one, you have enormous basis and enormous pent up demand here for these kinds of names. You know, if you take a look at outflows on the week, China's at five year lows on outflows and Japan's at five year highs. And we are seeing that it just makes it a little difficult because the way that they trade and how thin they are. And that's definitely something that we want to keep in mind. Now, I do want to go through some of the usual suspects before some of the others as well. Let's clean this off. If we look at Apple, you're trying to hold in here. There was an article out today. Goldman was talking about them yesterday. There was an article out today uh, where they're saying that China really likes this new iPhone 15. Who, who, who knows? You know, I have no way of knowing that. Uh, it, take the article for what it's worth. I just want to be Captain Obvious and say you stopped right at the 12 and the 22. And is that something that you really want to play with? And I don't know what the answer is to that. I don't know if that's something that I want to get involved in. And so let's let's see how that goes and we'll go from there. But 
I would be aware of that. I do like that has the potential to fill that gap. I don't know that this is number one on my radar tomorrow of names that I have to play. There's a couple things that happened today that are not, I wouldn't say concerning, but I think there's some mistakes here that we should go through, uh, especially with Carvana. I'm going to go through that one. Let's flip to this and let's get rid of everything and just drop to a five for a minute. One of the keys we were talking about yesterday and we were talking about this pre-market live, you should check out the pre-market live as well. Uh, if you don't, it's every single morning, starting some time between 8.15 and 8.30. And uh, I, I think there's a lot of ideas in there, candidly. And I would watch it even if you can't make it live, watch the replay. So one of the things that I like about ARM is from my position, I've been shorting it on these little breaks. I'm able to pull money out of it, but I'm not getting the break that I want. And I want to be really careful going into the Fed because you just don't know what you're going to get. One thing I will say is we did flip today. I think it's worth noting. We broke down before, got back above it. They made you feel warm and fuzzy into the close. And then they smashed your hopes and dreams in the morning, taking out the low. And then guess what you couldn't do? You never could get back over. That's a very important change in trend and a very important distinction. And this level makes your life very, very easy. And I would watch that closely. But I, the easiest way to do this is just take whatever that low is, which seems like 55.55, 55.54, and just move that bar right there. And you can see it even clearer. And that you could even use that as a demarcation line. But lately, I've been on the short side of this. I'm doing okay. I'm not doing great, candidly. Uh, I'm just, it's not breaking the way that I want. I'm pulling little bits of money out, but aren't we all right now, right, right lately? There's been, there's a couple of really good trades today, but lately it's been kind of hard. CVNA, uh, they came in on the news that they are one of the highest default rates out there of any company. Uh, what people are mis misconstruing from this is they actually took their debt and restructured it uh, and now they've lowered their cost. So from a company standpoint, it's a really good thing. It's not like they didn't have a negotiation, but it still has to count technically as a default. And I don't think people are getting this. And quite frankly, I don't think people want to get it going into the Fed. So this is something that I think was misspoken about today or mis let me rephrase that misunderstood. But does that look like something that you need to rush into? Not really. I tried to bottom fish a couple times. It didn't really do that much. I would watch that low right there. You hit it twice. Let's get into that level so you know exactly what you're looking at for tomorrow. You just want to hold that 46. You can see that 4602 here, 4601. We hit that twice. If you look at the high of this breakout bar, it gets to the 45 and three quarters. Come across to the opening here, and that is going to get you that 47 and a half level. So you have a lot going on right in here between 47 and a half and 46. Maybe a couple days of consolidation and inside day go from there. We'll see how this plays out. We did hold the 22, which is really good. I like that. And I like what we're seeing here. And as I said, we have a bunch of names to go through. Microsoft couldn't make it up its mind what it wants to be when it grows up. And we undercut and then we reversed. Uh, this was very frustrating off the open. What was really concerning to me off the open was this. Uh, the amount of wicks that we were getting on these bars was absolutely staggering for these mega companies. These are not small companies. I mean, you have Microsoft out here and you're getting five minute wicks where you're moving two, three dollars. This was really troubling off the open. And I just want to, again, just be obvious and point out that this was the close, the previous day close. You never got above it. So don't think that we're out of the woods. Uh, I know I'm going to get the you know left shoulder head, right shoulder camp telling me it's an inverted head and shoulders. I got to get through this and I have to get through uh, what Powell's going to say before I even think like that. Right now, I just see a, a trade where they just kept whacking people around. They undercut you here, they get your supply, and they rip it up. And then what do they do up here? They get all the stops. And after they get the stops, what do they do? It stops going up. So that, they're the kinds of games we saw played today. We saw it with uh, Netflix as well. I had a decent trade later in the day. And again, I'm going to just point out some things that are really troubling to me as far as liquidity. The amount of wicks that you had today were, were staggering. And you're seeing lack of liquidity in these names. And why is that a problem? See this break right here? This is a multi-billion dollar company. You couldn't find a bid to go from close to ask. Couldn't find one? I mean, that's it's staggering. And you didn't see it in one name. It was all over the place. They did it to NVIDIA today. And here's where we closed. And look at the next, look where the new bar opened. You couldn't find anybody in there to open this bar with. So to me, that's, I know you, you think, oh, well, that's, it's not a big deal. It's a big deal if you don't have liquidity in multi-billion dollar corporations. Yeah, it's a big deal. If you're going to close here on one bar and you're long NVIDIA, or Netflix, I'm sorry, in this case, and they're going to gap you down 30 cents in the name like that because they don't have anybody 
uh, that wants to buy, yeah, it's a problem. And oh, well, it's not a problem because it didn't affect you today. Doesn't mean that that's not why we started to see these wicks and explain that we're seeing some infighting here. And I would pay attention to this. I know that I do. I pay very close attention to it and it served me well. Even these wicks off the open, let's get rid of these drawings for a second. Uh, even these wicks off the open. To me, this looked like it was trying to rally and then we had this one long wick and then we broke that wick and you could say, well, that's pretty clear. Is it? Because look at what happened today off the open. And again, this is what I always look at this kind of stuff because I think it's really important just to see not only the games that they're playing with us, but also to see what kind of liquidity we have off the open and what they're doing. This is a one minute bar. You're, you open at 436 and then we're at 438 in less than a minute. You have a trillion dollar company that moved 50 basis points in a moment. That is not liquidity. That's a that's an issue. And it's not an issue that worked out. In other words, it's not like you saw them rip. There's news and it kept pushing. All they did was rip it comes all the way back down. And then if you take a look at the if you take a look at the day, just to kind of put it in perspective, and let's just mark that where you were there when that happened. Did you ever come back to it? You never came anywhere near it. So this is a somewhat of a concern of mine. I want to voice it because I've seen this kind of stuff before and it can lead to massive moves, long and short, because you have lack of liquidity. And I just want to be, I want us to be aware of that. What do you do here? I don't think there's much to do here, guys. I don't think you're getting much of a read in here where you could change your opinion long or short in looking at that chart. I don't think that you can do that looking at a lot of these and get that feeling. I think you're at very critical levels on a lot of these names. And all we're really doing is trying to get through tomorrow. We didn't really make a lot of higher highs. I think if you take a look at Tesla, there's a couple of names here I really want to get into. But if you take a look at Tesla and see how that acted today, we, well, we know where support is. We were short this. And we did quite well with that in puts. Uh, and then we start looking at this level. And this is why I always suggest that you have your levels marked off ahead of time. But if you drill all the way back into this, you can see there's a, a level right here. Let me just show you this. It's a lot cleaner this way and I'll drop this down. And you can see right in here and right here, it's been tested. And then here we were this morning. So as soon as we got to that, we kind of knew I was short and then I covered into this. Uh, and then we had some people on the other side of that that were very interested in being long. And that was a nice place for them to try to get long uh, and get involved. It makes sense. I mean, you get your little doji, you flip the doji, go for it, give it a shot. And it worked out for them very nicely. I just didn't want to be there. My head really wasn't in trying to, to play these counter trends today. And I view these as counter trends as we're making lower highs. But that definitely was a great trade. I just want to point out the market in and of itself. A bunch of people were trading this. I shorted this. I was not able to get a ton off. This was a really hard to borrow as a new, new issue. Uh, probably best trade I had, but it was just hard. Even when I went back to try to borrow more, that was just locked. And I have access to a lot of different uh, brokers and uh, lenders, and I just wasn't able to find any, find as much as I wanted. Let me put it to you that way. So it breaks right here. But before even that, all you need to do is draw into a one minute, take a look at this. And this is Instacart, which just, in my opinion, everyone will say, oh, it, was, it went well. But when they gap you up, all they did was just you know, hammer retail. And you're starting to look at the ones and then you're going sideways. Whenever you can't, just remember this as a trader, whenever you cannot get above the open, you want to pay attention. Whenever you cannot get above the open of, of an IPO, you want to pay attention. You got above Wick City, can't break, can't break. First bar below VWAP, breaks VWAP. After it breaks VWAP, you're still not above the open. You can literally short right here and just use that high as a stop. And then from there, it was just, you could actually use VWAP the whole way down if you really wanted to. There's, you can use whatever exit strategy you really, truly want to. But I think that this is very, very pertinent and something that we want to pay attention to. Uh, you're probably going back to 31 pretty quickly here if you can find the borrow. Uh, hopefully you'll hold 31 for them, but I, I would not hold my breath on that. I really wouldn't hold my breath on that. And you know, they gapped it up. They filled they filled who they needed to fill, but I don't know that you're going to hold 31. It just doesn't seem that way. You had this other little guy today too. Uh, this one was actually a lot of fun, but it was a little harder. And this was a commodities company. But you have these gaps and everything. I'd watch this tomorrow. I don't think this is done. Uh, IPO'd at $4. There's a lot of lines here, some one of the trades we were pointing out, but let me just clean all that off. I'd watch this tomorrow, DTCK. And, and just watch how that goes and, and, and go from there. But you know, overall, I'm going through the names and I, I can sit here and go through a bunch of them, but I'm trying to figure out the easiest ones to point out. And I really think that's gonna be the ones with the strong balance sheets. I mean, that's really what's holding in there. I have this control bar right here on Meta that's still playing around with me. And you know, so I, I wanna be careful there. Uh, I do want to point out this EWJ again. This is the Japanese ETF. 
If you don't like Toyota and you don't like MUFG, it, adding this index and ETF is probably not the worst idea that's out there right now, and it's it's definitely something that I you know that I would consider certainly. The other areas that we are seeing money pour into, we've been in this one twice already this year. Uh, we've been talking about it on this channel for a while. When you broke through that twenty, you had that twenty-eight dollar move. You know, the book value here is still high sixties, low seventies, depending on who you ask. And they marked to market here when they sold fifty percent to a Japanese conglomerate of two forty-five Park for two billion. So the mark to market, they're still trading about sixty-five cents on the dollar. I, someone said that the uh, CEO was on CNBC today. I don't really watch TV, so I don't. I wouldn't know. But if you if you look here, I mean, we're doing exceptionally well with it. One of the things I really like about this particular trade that we're in, uh, you you got this right here. You have a dragonfly at the top of a chart. They usually go very well. And uh, we're up fairly decently in that one. And this is another one, but you're trading a book value here. I don't have, to me, I don't have as much of an edge as I have here in uh, SLG. And I would look at these. I, even though we're in much cheaper on SLG, I would not rule out this trade. That's it.